Being in Colorado, it's very important to have a good boiler tech on your team because if you don't, it's a you know a lot of business you're missing out, number one, but two, probably 20% of our customers have a boiler that they need service. And so if you didn't have an experienced boiler tech, that's a customer that we wouldn't be able to take care of. And especially when you get into the front range or up into the mountains, um, in Denver, you're gonna see more forced air furnaces, but in the mountains, you're gonna see more boilers because uh, you know there's not as much forced air in the mountains. And so it's definitely important to have a good boiler tech and having someone like Adrian on the team is a huge asset for sure. How'd you get that one? Uh, that one's mounted a little differently. Oh, is it? Oh, it's a different um, pump. Yeah, let's just take the handle off. Take the handle off? Yeah. yeah. We are based in the Front Range, so we service all of Denver Metro. We go up to Boulder and we are currently going all the way as far out as Idaho Springs, but we recently started expanding into the mountains. Can you hand me one of those um, strut clamps right there real big, the one that's open, the other bag? Part of the reason we want to do that is number one, we're actually needed out there. Um, and two, most companies don't want to go there because you need four wheel drive. There's some mountains, you can get stuck on the other side of the Eisenhower tunnel if there's a snowstorm. Um, and so there's a lot more factors affecting, um, you know, what goes into servicing equipment in the mountain region. But part of the reason we want to get into doing it is because sometimes we have slow seasons um, in Denver and a lot of times in September it's already really cold and people are running their feet um, in the mountains and so we're needed there and, and it's a, if we're able to cover that area it, it gives us more work year-round so it's, it's really important for us to be able to do that. I'll put all my zone valves up here and bring all my supply lines on top that doesn't give me a whole lot of room because of all this piping or turn this down this way bring this down and then over and up. That's a lot of extra work. <laughs> Garden. 
when it comes to heating, uh, boilers are definitely a little bit more comfortable in terms of the heat they provide. Having a forced air or a, a traditional furnace type system is important if you want central air in your house to be able to cool it in the summer. Uh, but a lot of times in the mountains or areas where you might not really need AC, it's very common to see boilers. Um, and the reason is because it's just, it's a very comfortable source of heat. You get very even heating um, and it's just, it's, it's nice, you don't hear, there's less dust moving around the house because you don't have vents um, that are, that dust can collect in and then the fan comes on and blows dust everywhere. So they're really nice for that. So if I had a home that did not need AC, I would definitely consider radiant heat as a source. Um, in terms of retrofitting your house to have radiant heat, it's not very easy. So typically you buy a house that has a boiler and you leave it. Um, you don't really ever really want to get rid of a boiler if you have a boiler system just because they are very expensive to install after the fact. Uh, but once you have one, you'll, you'll see the benefits. It's very quiet and very comfortable to run. You just heat up this underneath and once that starts to melt, you just push it in. Just go wrap around it one time. That's it. You kind of gotta do it, gonna get the feel for it. This is one drawer, right? Yep. And I'll show you up here. So this fitting this slides into that. So the object is to get your solder to suck into that thing. <laughs> I know. And half inch, it's real fast. I mean, usually you can just push your solder in, take it off, you're done. Should go from the bottom of that. Yeah. So now, if there's any leaks, I can blame you. <laughs> <laughs> trying to do right now is you're trying to get your torch to melt your solder. You want the pipe to melt the solder. Okay. So you're, and your, your <clears throat> pipe was not near hot enough to see how your solder just dripped right onto it. Yeah. Okay. So you want to heat up the pipe just enough to get it to start sucking in, pull your torch off because then that way you know your pipe's hot enough. Okay. Got it. Got it on camera. Oh man. How embarrassing. It's almost better if you just you start using a wrench at that point. You just turn your valve off. That way you need a wrench on there. That way you can kind of gauge how tight it is. You may not have to go past that one turn. Too far. Too far? Yeah, it's not straight. Good to me. Seen better. 
<laughs> From who, Adrian? This is like yeah. my first time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see that pipe dope. from him he taught me uh, how to solder the pipe in uh, I learned how to cut the pipe it was uh, pretty interesting to see everything that goes into it um, a lot of it is a uh, it's pretty much like a puzzle uh, you never know what you're getting into when you come into the job um, and it was just uh, really interesting to see Adrian just figure everything out and uh, Adrian does a pretty good job of making it look clean even though it is a pretty complex job compared to um, installing like traditional AC systems or uh, furnaces, which are uh, not that they're easy, but um, boilers are just more complex.